So, thank you for being here. And uh, today we'll talk about how to unblock IT potential of Bulgaria. And mostly, there are several questions I have in mind. And uh, I would like to ask uh, first Stanislav Protasov about his view of Bulgaria as a currency representative. Stas, please tell us what you think, how to unblock potential of Bulgaria. Thank you, Nikolai. I think Bulgaria is great. And uh, I was told that uh, we are going to have slides, so I prepared. It happened that I'm the only one who prepared, but fortunately I can go through them very, very quick. Uh, first, uh, why to unlock IT potential at all? Uh, it's quite simple. IT industry is a very interesting industry. It actually generates more uh, GDP value than pretty much any other industry. And uh, on average, it generates for economy from three to five times more uh, dollars or lefts or euros than any other industry. Uh, does Bulgaria have any chance uh, to be successful in IT? Yes, Bulgaria has quite successful uh, history in science and in computers as well. And uh, basically, Bulgaria right now is in the focus of uh, major IT companies uh, from uh, the whole world. So actually, yes, Bulgaria has its chance. But uh, let us look uh, comparatively to other countries. I specifically uh, selected several countries of comparable size. And uh, you can see that, uh, for example, Estonia, which is a tiny country, five times less than Bulgaria, they have more IT specialists. Uh, they generate phenomenal 15% of GDP from IT sector. And uh, their uh, venture industry right now is uh, around 400 million uh, euros. And they were able to grow it 10 times for the last five years. For Bulgaria, for example, the whole venture industry is about 80 million euros. And IT venture industry is two times less than that, about 40 million euros. So Bulgaria right now is 10 times less in investment than Estonia. And uh, number of people working in IT in Bulgaria is actually not enough. I hear all the time that this is because uh, Germany, United Kingdom attract our people and they leave the country. Yeah, but basically it's because there is no focus on attracting people back to the country. I'm pretty much sure that many Bulgarians working today in IT in Ireland, UK, Germany, US, they will get back if they will see the opportunities home. And universities. Universities is a very important source of new talent. And I specifically choose computer science because uh, for general universities, while it's very important, it's a little bit uh, misleading. And, and as you can see, uh, all the countries has universities which are in the ranking, but Bulgaria. And this is a big problem. And essentially, Bulgaria needs to start working into getting the rankings and uh, to have good and excellent computer science inside the country. It's possible to do. The same was for, uni for Estonia, for example, and for Singapore 20 years ago. Right now, Singapore National University in computer science is 10th uh, in the world. So getting back, you need people, you need good universities, and you need uh, state helping to bring the talent to uh, do the knowledge transfer and to attract foreign and local specialists. That's pretty much, that's my recipe. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Stas, for your slides. Indeed, you're the only one who made it. But um, so let's <clears throat> go maybe one by one. And I'd like to ask uh, Velizar, uh, can you share your experience because you have such uh, 
great uh, <coughs> years of work as a director of on-demand management in NATO Communication Information Agency and uh, served as Deputy Minister of Defense, right? Uh, what do you think about IT potential of Bulgaria and obstacles which we see right now? Uh, thank you. It's a very important topic uh, because uh, I'm sure Bulgaria has a great potential if you look uh, uh, with the young people. So our young people are one of the best in all uh, Olympiads of mathematics, informatics, physics, robotics, etc. Because uh, as a tradition, Bulgarian families invest in their children. Still we have a good uh, uh, education system with specialized mathematical schools that are doing better and better. But the real challenge comes after that because uh, most of these people, and definitely best of these people, are leaving to study in foreign universities in Western Europe, United States, Canada, Israel, uh, and uh, most of them never come back. Thanks God they support preparation of young people, and there is a lot of work uh, even in Academy of Sciences, I'm representing here Academy of Sciences, uh, to help uh, uh, young students to develop their STEM education, uh, including with the support of people that left Bulgaria. The challenge, uh, we are not able to really attract and, and uh, keep uh, this uh, good specialist in Bulgaria, is uh, uh, I, I will look from the state perspective, because uh, business is business, uh, company are coming, company are leaving, but uh, I don't see real strategic thinking when it comes to uh, use of information technology in administration and security sector. Uh, we are still struggling to establish the position of chief information officer, someone to be responsible for strategic planning management, uh, to establish the proper governance structures that will really generate uh, proper requirements to universities and to research institutes. I'm a strong believer that uh, with uh, more than 50 universities in Bulgaria, it is very difficult to have uh, consolidation of education. Instead, uh, of that, I believe uh, in Academy of Sciences, if we focus on research-based uh, education and, uh, and really accelerated uh, move of the, of the people from uh, initial IT development uh, knowledge uh, to, to research, to PhD studies, to further development uh, in, in deep of uh, uh, innovations for IT, uh, this will help. And uh, another aspect uh, that I see as a challenge is uh, we still don't have, again from the state perspective, a good system of rotating our people. You mentioned the NATO Communication Information Agency. It is a great opportunity for every NATO nation. This is the best agency in the world, 4,000 people, doing the best of the best for command control, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, cyber defense. Uh, it is important to send people there and to get these people back working for Bulgarian government, uh, for Bulgarian security sector, if we have uh, large projects, if we have uh, a good consolidated research program. I will finish uh, with, uh, with our ambition. We're working with uh, George together to, to establish uh, a national uh, science and research program in cyber resilience that uh, probably will help uh, uh, moving in this direction. And of course, uh, if uh, there is more effort from the state, but not just funding, uh, more on governance and management for implementation, ambitious implementation of IT. This will keep young people in Bulgaria, and this will be beneficial for the business as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, <coughs> George, maybe I can ask you, right? Uh, you're serving as uh, head of cybersecurity lab at Sofia Tech Park, right? And uh, also <coughs> served as national coordinator on cybersecurity. Um, with Cyber Resilience Bulgaria 2020. Uh, do you think Bulgaria IT uh, has enough, enough specialists in cybersecurity? Is, is there uh, good programs in universities who can prepare specialists in IT security? What can be done to make the situation better, in your view? Thank you for the question. Sorry, first, that I joined the panel last minute because it's between the airport and the Ministry of Defense where I have to go to. Thank committee, you. but uh, normally I was supposed to be in Brussels today. Uh, it's an interesting and challenging topic. Actually, um, let me start with a broader 
common first because we, we talk about how to unlock the potential. So uh, first we have to identify uh, what is the target of unlocking this potential? What do we want to achieve? You mentioned experts in cybersecurity. Actually, uh, uh, there is a vision that you can make just like that uh, a specialist or expert in cybersecurity, starting from some networking experience, some protocols, some technical experience, and something. The reality is, and Velizar mentioned that, the goal is not actually only cybersecurity, not network security, not firewall security, and everything like that. So we talk about cyber resilience, which means that we have to do the, all the ecosystem cyber resilient, which means also the, the business models, the applications, and everything to be uh, designed in such a way. We, we, we speak about the security by design, resilience by design, and something like that. So why I'm saying that? Because uh, this doesn't come from few trainings. This doesn't come from few courses. You need to know everything about the software architecture, systems, uh, organizations, including the business processes, and then to go with your particular technology niche uh, among these layers, like layer 7, and then you go to layer 13. Uh, this is the, 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 what we consider now in the IT world or information systems connected. So in order to do that, you really need uh, a, a complex knowledge and experience. And how do you go to this knowledge? So we speak about potential. I'm afraid that a lot of the potential just run out of this room when we started the session. They're outside. So the same thing happens with my classes at Sofia University. Mm -hmm. So we have every year I teach, uh, I have like four or five different courses at different universities, starting from software quality, architectures, design of software, uh, active security, together with my uh, technical uh, colleagues from the lab. And what is happening like in the class or in the system, we have like in general 200, 300 students subscribe. How many do I have in a class? Can you imagine? 10. So out of 100, I have 20. 20. OK, active security, out of 40, we have almost 40, or we have 50. But that's interesting. Uh, so the story is really that uh, university is not considered, well, because I have also the hat coming from the business like 15 years ago. We always criticize the university programs. But since 10 years, I teach at the university as a guest professor. And I teach what I know from the experience. I teach practical experience. I teach what, what in Carnegie Mellon University is taught in the software engineering classes. And then, uh, so we have the foundations uh, of the software architectures. We have the, the templates, uh, all the standards and algorithms and everything, and including the quality standards, including security standards. Uh, who, uh, when, when you go to the companies, and I ask also the students, OK, why you don't come to the class? It's not interesting. They said, no, it's very interesting, but I have to work. So we have to differentiate between the, the work and the study. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about really software engineers, about uh, IT specialists that can design new things, that can invent new things. And we have to make it clear then about what kind of potential we speak. When we speak to the, uh, or when we ask the companies and managers, they want, uh, well, if they, they, they are honest, they will say, OK, we want uh, software engineers, software developers, inventive people. At the end of the day, it turns out that they need coders. They need programmers because they have to build to the cloud. They have to produce the code. And this reminds me the old time, like 15, no, 20 something years ago, when we started the uh, Olympiads in informatics here. So in the big room where we were doing solving these challenges, uh, when we have the challenges to solve, uh, there are like two categories of people. So some of us, and I, I'm proud I was in that category, coming from the maths to the computer science or informatics, uh, that we were thinking like two hours and then coding 30 minutes. Some other colleagues, they started coding from the very beginning. So normally, if my program worked, uh, that was very short, very efficient, and the algorithm was based on stronger maths or the model. The other code, maybe, my, so there is a chance that it doesn't work or it works. OK, or I didn't solve the problem. No, the other colleagues, they had the program written. Occasionally it runs with many errors uh, or doesn't run. But for sure, did not solve the problem. Uh, 
did not uh, work efficiently and so on. So now the, I, it's the same story with the software and IT industry. Do we need coders, programmers that make it quick and dirty or that could be built to the client? Or we need really something that is inventive development, new development. So you cannot re, uh, uh, request from a programmer to do apply security by design because it doesn't know. You need to know a lot of things before we go security by design. So I go back with this pledge, like, uh, I mean, or appeal, let's say, for the companies and the colleagues. Stimulate the students to go to class, finish their job. At Carnegie Mellon, you don't see any student working in a company. They work after that in Google, Microsoft, everywhere, which are around. But when you're in the class, be in the class, nice. which doesn't happen. So this is the way to unlock the potential, by the way, not to produce number of developers because there are not 30,000 like it is written there. There are more than 120,000 IT experts in Bulgaria, more than 50,000 developers or programmers. How many of them are developers? I don't know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So let me switch to another, uh, it's another speaker, uh, Boshadar. I'd like to um, get your opinion because you represent the uh, company Log Sentinel. At the same time, in your experience in the past, you served as an advisor uh, for e government and information security uh, in the public sector, right? Uh, do you see this problem with uh, IT community and uh, the potential of Bulgaria, which is not fully uh, developed right now, and maybe people going outside? What, what's your view on this? What can be done, maybe? top three actions to improve the situation? Well, yeah, obviously there is a problem. It was on the slides here that we have too few IT specialists. Whether the figures were correct or whether they are slightly deflated doesn't matter. Uh, still the percentage is low. So what do we do about it? And I'm afraid I'll say something very abstract and that is we need vision. Uh, and that's political vision because if your prime minister says that IT specialists should be shepherds, then obviously that's not a high level vision that will uh, motivate society to go to more technical uh, endeavors. And speaking of Estonia, which was there on the list as well, and they have a very high percentage of IT specialists, Estonia has had that vision since the 90s. Their, their politicians that were young back then, and they were IT skilled, if not developers themselves. Uh, and they led all of these programs, were they educational, were they e-government focused, and all, all across the spectrum. And in the end, that resulted in a digital society in Estonia and reflected into their IT sector as well. So this is one thing that is very abstract on the one hand, but, uh, and very hard to achieve on the other hand. Mm. Then there's obviously education, and what the state can and should do is first uh, help the currently rising trend of uh, private schools and private uh, academies. Uh, yesterday we had a, uh, a dinner, we spoke with Svetlinakov, he's one of the founders of, of Softuni, there is Telerik Academy as well, but there are some obstacles into creating these kinds of, of schools. Uh, there are obstacles of all sorts of uh, obstacles. For example, universities refusing to host such schools, I know of such examples, or the legislation forbidding some sorts of uh, more innovative schooling and or universities. So work with uh, the legislation and the universities to allow more flexible forms of uh, training software engineers because I kind of don't necessarily agree with George here that you should do one first and then the other. You should do a little bit of both, a lot, a lot of both. So yeah, go and learn how to do things properly and then as soon as possible, go and implement them. Do it with your hands because this is how you uh, do software engineering. You don't do it by just learning stuff and then you forget things because they're, they're constantly moving. So we have to have these uh, partnerships. I know it's, it's a trite and uh, too many, too often used word, but these partnerships between universities and companies and focusing the programs on particular knowledge areas, uh, something like that. And maybe finally, one measure that is, that doesn't sound quite popular, but we have the option being a European country to attract talent from non-European countries, like Moldova, like uh, Macedonia, like the other countries in the region or even from further abroad. 
and we should improve our procedures for letting these people, the highly trained experts that exist in those countries, to come here and boost our uh, ecosystem. Thank you. It's an interesting idea. Yes? Just one remark, because uh, when there is uh, a lot of uh, demand for people, uh, we tend to be not very careful, and uh, if we really want uh, high quality software and secure software, uh, clearing the people, vetting the people that are doing software is extremely important, especially if you are EU and NATO countries. So let us not neglect this and just uh, getting people from everywhere, rushing to bring them to coding. Thank you. Also good point, yeah. And <clears throat> we talk about people, uh, but let me ask uh, Todor, Todor uh, about um, uh, your work. So you're executive director in Sofia Tech Park, which is the um, uh, first science and technology park in uh, Bulgaria. And uh, <clears throat> you want to like, put this park uh, to be a preferable place for innovations, for uh, collaboration and business expansion. So um, you already do some real steps right, to unlock the potential and provide some facilities for companies, for IT. What do you think uh, we already achieved right, uh, some successes? Because we talk about some issues. Maybe you can uh, provide us some info about some good things which already happened and what additional steps can be done for the future. Uh, thank you. I'm really excited to be uh, here today and to just a little bit tell more about what uh, uh, Sofia Tech Park is trying to achieve in order to really improve uh, the innovation ecosystem and more properly uh, the IT industry. So, uh, in, in generally speaking, Sofia Tech Park actually is uh, very much looking like a, a startup entrepreneur. Uh, so we have almost, almost two and a half years of operation so we are trying to first learn our lessons. We are trying to uh, learn how to achieve uh, uh, how to achieve bigger steps. And uh, I think uh, more or less we have been uh, really successful in the last, especially in the last year, to uh, to provide good good environment for for uh, the companies that are actually working and, and living in uh, Sofia Tech Park. So uh, we. Uh, the technology park actually is designed in a way that uh, it can supply services in the whole chain of the innovation uh, service uh, in the, the whole innovation service chain. So what uh, what I mean is uh, uh, we have a wonderful infrastructure to to disseminate knowledge, which is our conference uh, facility, uh, where we achieve to really attract one of the most appealing uh, events in the last year and a half. So we've been able to attract also a lot of business, uh, business exposition, business forum, forums, uh, science conferences, um, uh, a lot of uh, policy making events and stuff like that. So uh, most of our visitors and most of our tenants at Sofia Tech Park were really able to attend those uh, uh, events which is really helpful. Next, uh, this is uh, the incubator where a number of um, companies can um, temporarily uh, live and work. So there, over there we are trying to pro pro provide them with uh, access to either knowledge, but m more importantly they are provided with uh, access to um, a really uh, state-of-the-art um, scientific scientific equipment so they can prove or they can test their innovative products. Uh, and of course, they also work in a very nice environment with uh, nice offices, with they're surrounded by uh, a number of uh, fellow companies where they can exchange knowledge, they can exchange issues, if you, if you like, I can say. So this is improving uh, improving infrastructure improving environment that we are also opening to to the rest of the stakeholders in the uh, innovation ecosystems like there are i mean it is a well known fact that sofia has become really a, a very attracting uh, attractive place uh, to uh, to develop your startup so there are a number of really nice and fine places 
where those startups uh, really uh, develop their products, their business cycle, and we are really open to, to complement or to cooperate with those places, and we have uh, certain cooperations with uh, all, all the guys from the, those places. So we are trying to uh, be, uh, we are trying to be a good part of the, the puzzle, improving puzzle of the innovation ecosystem in Sofia. Thank you very much. And so, <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, Orlin. So, you, uh, you are in IT since 1996, and uh, you graduated um, from Sofia University in 2007, right? Uh, currently, <clears throat> uh, there is a name of big company uh, near your name here. At the same time, I know that you spent your time a lot uh, playing with Kubernetes, trying to run the community of Kubernetes. So you have some experience, and I'd like to ask you about the uh, historical view of uh, do you think uh, something changed for the last 10, 20 years in terms of how IT is developing in Bulgaria? At what, what are obstacles and what can be done to improve the situation? Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Right? Um, I work for VMware, correct? But I'm here more to represent the community around Kubernetes. Uh, if I can compare now and 10 years ago, how IT was 10 years ago. It was more like hobby people. <laughs> For me, at least at that time of uh, my career, it was enjoying the technology and less thinking about the business. Now, the people from 10 years ago are more mature. They have families. They're grown-ups. <laughs> so um, they think about the IT in different way. So these days, those people tend more to be like enterprise-oriented. Still, the, the hobby part is still there. That's what keeps us doing it. So yeah, I think that's the biggest change. People are more mature, and they're, uh, the people involved in the, the process now are leading, um, leading positions in major companies. So yeah, things are changing quite fast. And for 10 years, a lot of things change. I see. So, uh, any specific ideas you have what can be done uh, by someone, by government, by companies uh, to, to, to attract people to develop the IT community? Uh, yeah, that's a good example of what I and my fellows are we're doing. We try to uh, involve the companies into the community by supporting the community and um, to invite the people in their offices, so hosting the community for meetups and, and, and stuff, so the people first to know the companies and what they're doing, so there are always some, some involvement from the company. It's not purely non-corporate. <laughs> so we, should try, we try to meet the people and try to meet the people with the company, so that's, that's what we do, and I think that, that's working. The community is growing, and it's not only us by the Kubernetes, but uh, uh, we have other communities who are following the same path. Yeah, so. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> now I'd like to um, ask um, Stanislav about the following. So we as Acronis uh, recently decided to go to Bulgaria. We are hosting this conference and uh, investing in Bulgaria. Uh, Stanislav, do you see some specific uh, obstacles or issues we experience here which uh, we'd like to like local government or um, IT community to solve. So what are the major issues for us which we see on our way to develop our presence in Bulgaria? Um, basically, uh, we talked already, and uh, there is an idea that uh, procedures could be improved to bring people here. Frankly speaking, uh, Bulgarian procedures are not the worst I saw. I, I mean, they are reasonably OK. They could be better. Um, well, actually, in order to work really well, you need to be able to bring a person to a country and get him a work permit like in two, three weeks. Right now in Bulgaria, it's more like two months, frankly speaking. And this is a little bit slow. But fortunately, this pro process still works, right? Um, so I would not say that there are a lot of obstacles, so it's very difficult. Actually, we are quite happy with current uh, progress, uh, both in uh, relocating people and hiring uh, local people. Uh, we actually doubled our office uh, in the uh, last four or five months. 
so it's very good progress. But yeah, there are some issues. First of all, there are not enough uh, schools for kids, for those people who are relocating. Expats actually will see a problem here. Second is uh, medical insurance is kind of something we still have to understand much better. And this is very important for expats. I live in Singapore, and in Singapore, uh, actually, there are 42 million citizens and 1.5 million of expats. So Singapore is doing this extremely well. And actually, in Singapore, expats do not have problems like how do I get medical insurance, where do I go if I have a problem, uh, how do I call the police, uh, will they understand me or they speak only Mandarin and things like that. In Bulgaria, it's a little bit uh, different, at least for now, but it's kind of not, nothing which could not be improved uh, relatively fast, like in the next uh, two, three years, if there would be a focus on that. One thing which I uh, actually noticed is that um, we were comparing Estonia and Bulgaria. In Bulgaria, there is investment agency in the government uh, who has a KPI of number of companies uh, brought uh, to Bulgaria. And they are working towards this KPI, and they bring companies like us to Bulgaria, and then immediately they start looking for a new uh, company to bring in. In Estonia, they actually created different set of KPIs, not number of companies, but rather number of uh, workplaces and uh, number of uh, qualified people brought in and uh, how it will affect GDP and things like that. As a result, in Estonia, when they bring the company, they actually babysit this company for another year or two. And I think that if Bulgaria will do pretty much the same, then with minimal investment, it would be able to achieve much better result that we, we see right now. Thank you. Uh, I have a question um, based on what you just uh, said. Uh, there are some interesting uh, cases, some experience by Singapore, by Estonia. Um, it's a question to all panelists. Uh, so what do you think who should lead this activity? You know, in software development, we need a project manager who coordinates all works in one project, right, to make it successful. Uh, in terms of such big project, uh, who, who should lead this? Anyone from government, from local government, from educational um, society? Who should be a project manager of such improvements? Uh, well, we, pretty much in every country, everybody knows what uh, government should do. So I would not stop here. Um, I think it's uh, getting formed here, and I think Bascom, as an association of IT companies, can actually play the leading role here. And I think Bascom wants to play this role. And uh, I really hope we just actually being accepted to Bascom, and I think uh, all together, all local companies, we can do the situation much better very fast. But actually, I'm not sure, maybe I'm mistaken, but George um, Brashnarov, George, you are not here, right? Yeah, he is not here. He told us yesterday that he yeah. has a conflict. It's a bit funny schedule. that uh, yeah. he needs to, to lead this, but he is not with us today. <laughs> uh, he was in the, our office yesterday. Okay. So we, nice. we did talk. And I actually showed him uh, my presentation, and I actually asked his feedback. And those numbers on number of people is actually from him. I had a little bit higher numbers. George, anything you want to add from your side? Yeah, I, I can speak a little bit on behalf of Bascom, because I was the first chairman of that association for five years, 15, more than 15 years ago. And among the missions, because you said like national project, actually the project is to uh, create capacity of that industry. And uh, when we started Bascom, like I believe 13 companies at the very beginning, ma mainly uh, export-oriented companies, we said that the, uh, the, the major profile expected from a, such a small country 
is not uh, a huge competitor of the outsourcing destinations like uh, India, like uh, Brazil or whatever, and uh, that uh, our potential is really to, uh, to focus on not that much on a number, but on a quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, this means also that uh, the profile of the companies was more in uh, not direction like outsourcing, but uh, more like development centers, and those are good names. Some of them are here, like even VMware, uh, uh, which is later. At the moment, uh, in Bascom, there are more than 50 companies, 60, some the big, some small. I understood that Acron is also applied for a membership. Yeah? Yep. And uh, uh, multinational, local companies, and so on. And still among the main, very main goal of that association is really to increase the capacity for the software industry by increasing both like numbers, if possible, and uh, quality. And a lot, a lot of the activities that Bascom was doing was, uh, were related first to revise the university programs. That was at the very beginning. So a lot of, obs oops, a lot of obsolete uh, uh, courses, trainings, uh, uh, they were replaced, uh, modernized. Uh, uh, along with that initiative started uh, the collaboration with Carnegie Mellon University and our European Software Institute actually started like that uh, to uh, increase the higher level quality of the software uh, project managers, uh, designers of systems and so on. This is the, the higher part of the uh, software engineers, let's call it like that, based on the, among the top three universities uh, uh, in the Software Engineering Institute and Institute for Software Research at Carnegie Mellon. And uh, so this is one thing, focusing on quality. On the other hand, focusing on the numbers, uh, uh, you know there are at least three, four, five different academies that uh, uh, help and a lot of them consulted or some of them are initiated by members of BASCOM actually. Uh, companies uh, to increase the numbers of people uh, that are interested in programming, let's call it like that. Some of them will stay at that level, some of them will go uh, at the higher level, like designing systems and so on. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is really a good uh, uh, scoping of the project. So on one hand, you need the uh, numbers of people that can do programming, but software is not just programming. So you, and then uh, another number of people or that uh, uh, as, uh, experts or specialists interested or talents that can go uh, higher. Uh, there is also improvement of the, uh, because it was mentioned like the role of the government. So there are like uh, standards or programs for education. There was a new uh, discipline or the new profile of education program that was uh, uh, created uh, entirely by BASCOM, by public-private partnership or private-public par partnership. Initiative uh, applied uh, developer. That's extremely uh, important, especially now with the uh, IoT and all the other, I mean, it's, uh, cloud computing and so on, the, uh, including security, cybersecurity uh, aspects of that. So I think this is a huge project uh, where the industry leads at this moment. Uh, the government follows with the Ministry of Education. And uh, uh, a lot, uh, not, not to offend any of the colleagues, but you know, like uh, Telerik Academy, Softuni, and all, many other uh, Imperial Online, the, the school there, and so on, everybody is uh, 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 contributing to increasing the number of developers. There is one specific category that I, I would like to mention, uh, uh, that people get other type of education like physics, chemistry, and anything else that uh, get requalified or technical education uh, that uh, qualify for developers and they become extremely, extremely creative and good developers because they do have domain knowledge from a certain area. So in this case, uh, software language or the system, uh, programming system, is the language they express what they know in the other and they contribute a lot. So that's why we do have a lot of uh, very successful companies developing software in the field of uh, uh, fintech finances because we have strong mathematicians still, hopefully, and uh, uh, in terms of security as well, uh, but also uh, medical and many other systems as well. Nice okay, one. so uh, this is the key for the added value, let's say, develop on the higher level. So the broader education, we call it not T-shaped, like just programming, mm -hmm. but we call P-shaped, at least one domain knowledge and development or software, that is like the number P, uh, the letter P. Okay, thank you.
And uh, let me ask uh, an audience, because we have uh, six bright, um, bright minds uh, on the stage, uh, but many, many people here in the audience. Uh, maybe some of you have some ideas or recommendations or questions to the panelists regarding how to unlock the potential of IT in Bulgaria. Any ideas, questions? Please name yourself. Hi. Hey, hey, hi. My name is Hrisu Todorov, and I'm a new employee in a Kronis Bulgaria office. And I have a question, especially to Božidar. Uh, he mentioned uh, one step for unlocking the IT potential is the vision. And as your role as an um, advisor of the government in all ITE government stuff, what is your summary of the progress of the government in the last, let's say, three or four years in unlocking the IPT potential. As a summary, just. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. I was not directly involved in the uh, improvement of the IT sector. It was more of an internal work for the government, but also that uh, work had to be customer-faced, which means citizen-faced. Uh, and the example with Singapore and Estonia, how it's very easy to handle the insurance and all of the administrative services, opening a company, all of these burdens that the administration has to, they just do it because they are the administration. Uh, and our goal was to remove that burden and to make the government more transparent. That said, uh, the progress was, I think, moderate. We uh, did some legislation changes and some actual projects. Uh, now, continuity is also happening more or less, but with a decreased uh, speed. And to, to go back to the vision problem, uh, I, have one, I wanted to say one example on, on the previous question as well, where, yes, the business should lead these initiatives because they know what they need, but there should be someone, if possible, as high up in government or local government as possible. For example, a deputy prime minister. And I think uh, Akronis has met with uh, deputy prime minister Donchev, who is uh, responsible for that kind of thing. Well, my example was, was about to be Plovdiv, which is uh, the second largest city in Bulgaria. Uh, they have a deputy mayor that probably very few people have heard of, but his vision and his understanding of technology and investment allowed, among other things, Plovdiv to become uh, the second largest IT hub in Bulgaria. So, yeah, you just need the right people in the right place to remove roadblocks. Because ro roadblocks are the thing that we were removing when I was in government, and the things that uh, stop any good initiative from, from happening. Thank you. Yes, sure. Let me add something about uh, the, the vision part. Because uh, it was mentioned in previous presentation as well, in IT people, are the most important asset. And IT people are very sensitive, very responsible people. They are sensitive to the environment. If the environment is not fully digitized, if they cannot benefit from IT in their daily life, of course, they will work initially, but after that, they move to Estonia, to Singapore, to United States, because of the opportunities to grow. So uh, the vision is not just uh, to educate people or to create opportunities for the companies, the vision uh, related to a digital society has to come from the, the highest possible level and to uh, address all the aspects of digitalization of society for the benefit of the citizens. Only in this environment we could expect young people to grow uh, in IT, to stay in Bulgaria, and of course I will finish with this. Uh, every person wants to be proud of doing something for his or her own country. So yes, it is great to work for a project for Germany, for UK, for Singapore, but uh, I think Bulgarian IT specialists want to be proud of uh, developing Bulgarian e-health system, Bulgarian vineyard system, Bulgarian whatever uh, trade register system that is best of the world, not the worst of the world. Thank you. Yes, and uh, here <coughs> they maybe give me a chance to express my opinion because I have more than 20 years in software development of uh, big international companies. Uh, I believe uh, it's very important word is ecosystem because as uh, in <coughs> software development, if you have a platform uh, with a lot of investments, but uh, the ecosystem of application is not here, the platform is dying. 
And with all respect to Microsoft, Windows Phone platform is exactly this exam example, which is um, late and without ecosystem, it can't work even with Microsoft behind. And the same here, uh, to attract people to stay in Bulgaria, to develop this, uh, we need an ecosystem of uh, companies, many companies working. So if person finished with one company, he can find easily a place in another company. And this company should live uh, successfully if there are a lot of projects and demand, demand from the society, demand from government, from people to develop different type of applications, the software. And uh, it's all about how the society and government think about the uh, next steps of like ne next 10 years, next 20 years, what uh, Bulgaria, what Sofia will be, what type of um, different you know, electronic parts, IoT, uh, artificial intelligence really applicable for life of people.